Welcome to the I Can't Sleep Podcast, where I read random articles from across the web to bore you to sleep with my soothing voice. I'm your host, Benjamin Boster. Today's episode is from a Wikipedia article titled Boring Lava Field, recommended by Karen Metzger. The Boring Lava Field, also known as the Boring Volcanic Field, is a Pleoplasticine volcanic field with cinder cones, small shield volcanoes, and lava flows in the northern Willamette Valley in the U.S. state of Oregon, an adjacent southwest Washington state. The field got its name from the town of Boring, Oregon, located 12 miles southeast of downtown Portland. Boring lies just southeast of the most dense cluster of lava vents. The zone became active about 2.7 million years ago with long periods of activity interspersed with quiescence. Its last eruptions took place about 57,000 years ago at the Beacon Rock Cinder Cone Volcano. The individual volcanic vents of the field are considered extinct, but the field itself is not. The volcanic field covers an area of about 1,500 square miles, and it has a total volume of 2.4 cubic miles. This region sustains diverse flora and fauna within its habitat areas, which are subject to Portland's moderate climate with wide temperature variations and mild precipitation. The highest elevation of the field is at Larch Mountain, which reaches a height of 4,055 feet. The Portland metropolitan area, including suburbs, is one of the few places in the continental United States to have extinct volcanoes within a city's limits. And the boring lava field plays an important role in local affairs, including the development of the Robertson Tunnel, recreation, and nature parks. Because of the field's proximity to densely populated areas, eruptive activity would be a threat to human life and property, but the probability for future eruptions in the Portland-Vancouver metropolitan area is very low. Boring lava may also influence future earthquakes in the area as intrusive rock from its historic eruptions may affect ground movement. Geography The Boring Lava deposits received their name based on their proximity to the town of Boring, which lies 12 miles southeast of downtown Portland. The term boring lava is often used to refer to the local deposits erupted by vents in the field. They are located in the western portion of the U.S. state of Oregon. The deposits were given this name by R. Tresher in 1942. In 2002, as geochemical and geochronological information on the boring deposits accumulated, They were designated part of the larger boring lava field. This grouping is somewhat informal and is based on similarities in age and lithology. The boring lava deposits lie west of the town of Boring. The Global Volcanism Program lists its highest elevation as 4,055 feet at Larch Mountain with most vents reaching an elevation of 660 to 980 feet. Located in the Portland Basin, the field consists of monogenetic volcanic cones that appear as hills throughout the area, reaching heights of 650 feet above their surroundings. The collection includes more than 80 small volcanic edifices and lava flows in the Portland-Vancouver metropolitan area, with the possibility of more volcanic deposits buried under sedimentary rock layers. The borders for the Boring Lava Field group are clear, except on the eastern side where distinguishing between boring deposits and those from the major Cascade Arc are less clear, 
Many geologists have arbitrarily placed the eastern border at a longitude of 122 degrees west. In total, the boring lava field covers an area of about 1,500 square miles, and it has a total volume of 2.4 cubic miles. Physical Geography With a variable topography, the Portland area ranges from river valley floors to terraces reaching elevations of 400 feet. The Willamette Valley is marked by hills reaching heights more than 1,000 feet, and it, also, and it is also physically separated from the lower Columbia River Valley. The Columbia River flows west from the eastern Portland region, merging with the Willamette near Portland before moving north. Tributaries for the Willamette include the Pudding, Malala, Tualatin, Abernethy, and Clackamas Rivers, while the Washougal and Sandy Rivers mark notable tributaries for the Columbia River. The Columbia River has significantly shaped the geology of the area. Multnomah Creek drains from Large Mountain, one of the volcanic cones in Boring Lava Field. Local streams near the community of Boring receive seepage from the local aquifer. This unit, part of the Greater Troutdale Sandstone Aquifer, is also made of sandstone and conglomerate and bears water well. It also supplies water to domestic wells in the Mount Norway area. Boring lava is known to have formed intrusions into local sedimentary rock, and thus it may guide flow of groundwater locally. Portland's climate is moderate, with long growing seasons, moderate rainfall, mild winters, and warm, dry summer seasons. The area typically does not experience frost, with more than 200 frost free days annually. Temperature can vary widely, reaching a historic maximum of 107 degrees Fahrenheit, though the usual July maximum is below 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and the average minimum for January is above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Yearly precipitation averages between 35 to 45 inches in most river valleys, with a mean of 42.04 inches from 1871 through 1952. It shows variability, however, with a historic low of 26.11 inches at Portland in 1929 and a maximum of 67.24 inches in 1882. More than 75% of this precipitation occurs between October and March. July and August mark the driest months with means below one inch, while November, December, and January represent the wettest, with averages greater than six inches. Prevailing winds originate from the south during winter and from the northwest during the summer season, with the exception of prevailing winds at the mouth of the Columbia River Gorge, where winds predominantly move to the east. The southern winds have the highest velocities of the three, only rarely occurring with a potentially destructive force. Ecology The Portland area has a moderate climate, and precipitation is not typically very heavy, allowing for vegetation which can hamper field work in the area. Many forests that cover the area were partly cleared for agriculture, timber, or cemetery applications in the early 20th century. These cleared and burned land plots sustain rich sands of secondary forest featuring gorse, huckleberry, nettles, poison oak, salal, and blackberry. Myriad species of fern as well as rapid growth deciduous trees like alder and vine maple are also frequent. Forests support stands of Douglas fir, western hemlock, western red cedar, Pacific dogwood, big leaf maple, Oregon ash, red alder, cascara buckthorn, 
Pacific Madrone, and Oregon White Oak. Within swamps and moist areas and creeks, the Shrub Devil's Club can be observed. Other trees that sometimes dominate forest areas include black cottonwood and red alder. Forest communities have many additional shrubs, including Indian plum, western hazel, and snowberry. Ground layer plants include the herbaceous sword fern and stinging nettle. In contemporary times, clearing of forests for housing development have left about half of the boring lava region still forested. As a result, water quality has decreased due to higher sedimentation and turbidity, and flooding has gotten worse over time. Streams within the area are of either first or second order, with moderate to low flows and average gradients between 10 and 12 percent. Cool and clear, many sustain macroinvertebrates and a smaller number support amphibians and fish. The riparian zones in the lava field area host diverse species, and they are influenced by uplands that serve as migration connections for birds, mammals, reptiles, and some amphibians. The United States Fish and Wildlife Service provide a list of potentially threatened or endangered species in the boring lava area, calling them sensitive species. Among plant species, they determined the following species to be sensitive. White top aster, golden Indian paintbrush, tall bugbane, pale larkspur, peacock larkspur, Willamette Daisy, Water Hawilia, Bradshaw's Lomatium, Kincaid's Lupine, Howell's Montia, Nelson's Checkerwallow, and Oregon's Sullivantia. For animal and marine life, Northwestern Pond Turtles, Willow Flycatchers, Long Eared Myotises, Fringed myoteses, long legged myoteses, Yuma myoteses, Pacific western big eared bats, and northern red legged frogs have been identified as species of concern. Pileated woodpeckers, bald eagles, cutthroat trout, and coho salmon are also considered sensitive. Settler Colonial History The nearby Portland area has historically been a center for trade since it was founded in 1845. With time, commerce has diversified. Iron mining and smelting was common between 1867 and 1894, with paper mills becoming established as an industry in 1885. Plants manufacturing cement and conducting aluminum production and shipyards can be found in the region. Industrial chemical production represents an important industry in Portland. Most of these industries rely on resources outsourced from other areas except for the paper industry. Business is driven by low power costs and the local industrial mineral market. Other important manufacturing industries in the nearby region include food processing and logging. In 1893, the Kelly Butte Natural Area was formed by a petition from the Portland City Council. The park, a sect of public land six miles to the southeast of downtown Portland named after a pioneer family, covers an area of 22.63 acres including part of the boring lava field. Historically, it sustained a quarry, prompting the creation of the Kelly Butte Jail, which used prisoner labor under guard supervision to gather crushed rocks for building roads in Portland until the 1950s. In general, rocks from the boring lava field have been used for masonry projects, including retaining walls, garden walls, and rock gardens, especially oxidized and scoriaceous rocks. 
Despite the prevalence of quarrying activity in historical times, there is no ongoing mineral or aggregate resource mining near the boring lava field. In 1952, after a local vote, the Kelly Butte Civil Defense Center was built between 1955 and 1956, costing around $670,000. The center was constructed to host local government agents should a nuclear attack on Portland occur. It had an area of 18,820 square feet, intended to host 250 people in case an emergency government became necessary. It was known throughout the United States as a model facility for local governments, and in 1957, the docudrama A Day Called X included footage of the Defense Center. The center was left obsolete after a 1963 Portland City Council vote to abolish it passed. In 1968, just one permanent employee remained. Eventually, the building was converted into an emergency services dispatch center from 1974 through 1994, when it was abandoned due to rising costs for renovation and space limitations. That same year, the building was vacated, and then it was sealed off in 2006. A 60-bed isolation hospital operated at Kelly Butte from September 1920 until 1960 supporting patients with communicable diseases. A 10 million gallon water tank stood in the area from 1968 through 2010, when it was replaced with a 25 million gallon underground reservoir that cost $100 million, despite opposition from local environmental groups like the Friends of the Reservoirs. Historically, the park has also housed a police firing range and Kelly Butte remains a recreational space today, administered jointly by Portland Parks and Recreation and the Portland Water Board. In 1981, the Portland city government built a reservoir at the north end of Powell Butte, part of the Boring Lava Field, which still serves the city. In 1987, Portland government created Powell Butte Nature Park covering 600 acres of meadows and forest within the city. Planning started in 1995 for a second water reservoir in the area, which was built between 2011 and 2014. The new reservoir is underground, buried under topsoil and native plants, and has a volume of 50 million U.S. gallons. With the new reservoir came improvements to the Powell Butte Park, including resurfaced and realigned trails, reduced environmental impacts, better accessibility measures, and reduction of steep grades. The government also built a visitor's center, caretaker's house, public restrooms, maintenance yard, and a permeable parking area that permitted filtration of rainwater through asphalt to an underground stone bed, where it could be absorbed by the soil and then into the nearest aquifer. Built between 1993 and 1998, the Robertson Tunnel runs for three miles through the Tualatin Mountains. Located 260 feet underground, it marks the deepest train station in North America. The tunnel displays a core that exhibits boring lava deposits. For the first 3,900 feet of the tunnel, the core shows boring lava flows with cinder, breccia, and loess dated from 1.47 million to 120,000 years ago, which have been deformed by the Sylvan Fault. With the Oatfield Fault, the Sylvan Fault trends to the northwest extending 9.3 miles northwest and 16 miles southeast of the tunnel. It is of quaternary age and lacks surface expression, possibly as a result of its extensive burial by Lois along its length. In 2000, the non-profit Friends of Mount Tabor Park was formed to help maintain the Mount Tabor Park area, located 3.5 miles east of downtown Portland. 
They have an organizational website and publish a biannual newsletter called the Tabor Times. Membership requires dues, and they also rely on donations and a gift shop for financial support. In September 2017, the Hogan Butte Nature Park opened in the city of Gresham, encompassing an area of 46 acres. That includes the extinct boring lava field volcano, Hogan Butte. This park opened after more than 25 years of processing supported by a 1990 bond from the city and two regional metro bonds. Collaborators for opening the park include the U.S. Forest Service, local citizens, Metro, the Trust for Public Land, and the Buttes Conservancy Organization. Gresham marks one of just a few places in the United States with volcanoes contained in its city limits. Mount Sylvania and Mount Scott lie within the limits of Portland and the southwestern and southeastern parts of the city, respectively. Geology There are 90 volcanic centers within a 20-mile radius of Troutdale and more than 32 vents within a 13-mile radius of Kelly Butte. Mostly small cinder cone vents, these volcanoes also include some larger lava domes from shield volcanoes at Mount Sylvania, Highland Butte, and Larch Mountain. The boring lava field marks the densest volcanic vicinity in this group, encompassing an area of 36 square miles. It includes more than 80 known small vents and associated lava flows, with more volcanic deposits likely present under sedimentary rock deposits from the Missoula floods, also known as the Bretts or Ice Age floods, which took place between 21,000 and 15,000 years ago and probably destroyed small cinder cones, including those made from tuff and mare crates, burying them under up to 98 feet of silt from slack water. The Global Volcanism Program reports that the field includes somewhere between 32 and 50 shield volcanoes and cinder cones, with many vents concentrated northwest of the town of Boring. Considered an outlier of the Cascade Range, the Boring Lava Field lies about 62 miles to the west of the major Cascade Crest. It marks one of five volcanic fields along the Quaternary Cascade Arc, along with Indian Heaven Tumalo in Oregon, the Mount Bachelor Chain, and Caribou in California. Like the Cascade Range, the boring field was also generated by the subduction of the oceanic Juan de Fuca tectonic plate under the North American tectonic plate, but it has a different tectonic position with its eruptive activity more likely related to tectonic rifting throughout the region. The boring lava field has erupted material derived from hot mantle magma, and the subducting Juan de Fuca plate may be as shallow as 50 miles in depth at their location. The High Cascades, a segment of the Cascade volcanic arc that includes the boring lava fields, is characterized by basaltic lava flows with andesite, tuff, breccia, and volcanic ash. The high cascades may lie over a graben, a depressed block of the Earth's crust bordered by parallel faults, and activity at the boring field and throughout the Portland area may be associated with the deformation of the block. Portland lies within the Portland Basin, part of the Four Arc, the region between an oceanic trench and the associated volcanic arc, between the Cascades Major Arc and the Pacific Coast Ranges, which consist of Eocene to Miocene marine sedimentary rock deposits 
and Eocene intrusions and extrusions of the basalt that were emplaced on the Siletz terrain. The eastern boundary of the Portland Basin is the Cascades, while the Tualatin Mountains lie to the west, along an anticline formation that has been changing since the Miocene. The boring lava field sits on the floor of the Portland Basin, residing in the four-arc setting between tectonic extension to the south and compression to the north. The uneven distribution of vents within this four-arc suggests a local zone of crustal expansion, indicative of northward movement and clockwise rotation of a tectonic microplate that leads to gradual northwest trending propagation for the field over time. The migration rate for volcanism within the field is an average of 0.37 inches plus or minus 0.063 inches per year relative to the motion of crustal blocks in the region, using the last 2.7 million years as a starting reference point. The boring lava field represents the youngest episode of volcanism within the Cascade Forearc, and while there is no evidence that they were associated with a slab window, a gap that forms in a subducted oceanic plate when a mid-ocean ridge meets with a subduction zone and plate divergence at the ridge and convergence at the subduction zone continue, causing the ridge to be subducted, they likely interacted with the regional mantle wedge. The boring lava field shows a similar composition to the high cascades that run through Oregon and southern Washington state, with Pliocene and Pleistocene basalt lava flows and bridges. It was active during the late tertiary into the early quaternary. Within the field, Lava shows a diverse composition overall, varying from low K tholeitic to high K calc alkaline eruptive products. Some of the low K tholeitic deposits likely originated from vents closer to the high cascades, and they are overlain by boring lava materials. J. M. Shempert proposed that mantle sources for the two different lava types may be different, and that the calc alkaline sources are more refractory. Like the surrounding high cascades, boring lava field erupted lava made of olivine, basalt, and basaltic andesite. These subalkaline basalts and basaltic andesite predominate among boring lava deposits. The olivine basalt deposits have fine to medium textures, and the basaltic andesite lava flow deposits have relatively little pyroclastic rock in them, suggesting that explosive eruptions were uncommon within the field. Dark gray to light gray in color. Boring lava produces columnar and platy joints, which can be seen in Oregon east of Portland and in Clark County in Washington state. It is usually ferric, though one sample from Rocky Butte consists of labradorite with olivine phenocrysts that have been transformed from idingsite. The boring lava reaches thicknesses of more than 400 feet. Boring lava has a more mafic, rich in magnesium and iron composition than the nearby volcano Mount Hood, but they have similar ages. There is a small amount of andesite in the lavas from the fields, mostly erupted from monogenetic vents or large mountain. Sometimes boring lava overlaps with volcanoclastic conglomerate from other Cascade eruptions in Multnomah County and the northern part of Clackamas County. The boring lava also contains tuff, cinder, and scoria. It is characterized by plagioclast laths that show a pilotaxitic texture with spaces between them that show a dictitaxitic texture. 
The boring lava exposures show aeromagnetic anomalies that short wavelengths and high amplitudes suggest of their relatively young geological ages. At points where the boring lava sits over Troutdale formation deposits, landslides are frequent, producing steep head scarps with heights of 66 feet. These scarps tend to have grabens at their bases and boring lava blocks at their tops, and they show variable slide surfaces from hummocky to flat. A number of these exposures show dips up to 35 degrees, as well as minor faults. The landslides range in thickness from 20 to 79 feet. Portland's wet climate leads to weathering, which at the boring lava field has reached depths of up to 25 feet, altering the upper 5 to 15 feet of soil to a red clay-like material. At the cinder cone in Mount Tabor Park, an outcrop of quartzite pebble xenoliths, rock fragments enveloped in a larger rock during the latter's development and solidification can be observed among local cinder specimens, dating from Miocene to Pliocene Troutdale deposits. While the volcanic rock of boring lava was being emplaced over rock from the Troutdale formation, there was deformation that uplifted and dropped fault blocks to the southeast of Portland. Along the Washougal River, a large landslide occurred as a result of failure due to the boring lava pushing down on rock from the Troutdale Formation. Intrusions of boring lava formed outcrops at Highland Butte, La Butte, and potentially in the subsurface regions near Aurora and Curtis, and these intrusions have been associated with normal faulting at Parrot and Peets Mountain, Aurora, Curtis, and Swan Island along the Malala River. Faults together with igneous intrusions are usually accompanied by stretching and doming as a result of magma influxes or collapses from the evacuation of the magma flows. Similarly, faults north of Oregon City might have resulted from subsidence after magma chambers emptied or lava was extruded as a result of boring lava eruptions. Some of the boring lava vents are known to cut off hydrogeologic units in the surrounding area. Eruptive vents on the western edge of the field formed along a fault line that trended to the northeast, located north of present-day Carver. Boring lava was erupted by vents in the volcanic field and it has been exposed at elevated topographic levels in intact volcanic cones and dissected lava plains. There is likely more lava deposited under quaternary sedimentary mantles throughout the region, though activity was confined to a relatively concentrated area.